guys, welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. <laughs> We're back today with my Volkswagen bus, also known as Gregory. As you've probably noticed, we haven't been doing a whole lot of work on him this past month. Well, because it's just been cold, it's been rainy, and I live here in Florida, and it sucks. Today is actually a relatively nice day. It's about 65 degrees out, and it's not raining. This is the first time in a long time that I've actually had a little time off, and I can actually do something <laughs> when the sky is staying up and I'm not freezing my... We're out here with Gregory, and what we need to replace today is this whole section that's down under here. This dog leg is in some terrible, terrible shape. The one on the driver's side is completely missing, at least the bottom half of it anyway. The upper half of the dog leg is in good shape. The bottom half is just, it was toast. The one on this side, turns out the inner structure was missing. I didn't even know there was an inner structure. So as I was trying to put some of these puzzle pieces together, I was noticing that some of the ends don't meet and there's open gaping holes that should be covered by something. So after researching some exploded views of body parts and how these things go together, it turned out there was a few things I was missing. So I had to go and order them. And of course, wait for the stuff to show up. CIP1 has been a wonderful help. If you don't know already, CIP1 is sponsoring Gregory. So hit up CIP1.com for all of your parts needs, whether it be for a bus, thing, beetle, gear, whatever you've got, air-cooled Volkswagen, hit them up. They also have some water-cooled stuff, so check them out, CIP1.com. As always, guys, like you like it, comment, subscribe, pluck that dingle belly, that way you get updates every time I upload a video. And don't forget to check out duckshit.net, where all of my different social media links are. That's right, everything that I do, you'll find it there. So if you wonder where I'm at, you should be hitting up duckshit.net, check out my Instagram, check out my Facebook group page. If I'm not active here, you'll find me somewhere else. Hey, thanks for watching, guys. We'll be back right after that intro. All right, well, what you didn't see from the cold open of this video is where I started kicking and <laughs> screaming and just, yeah, I said a lot of swear words at this little <laughs> called it every kind of <laughs> word you could ever imagine. <laughs> anyway, this sucker turned out that um, the contour was all wrong right through here. This piece just did not fit. So what I had to do is I had to cut out almost a quarter of an inch in between here because the, the bend on it was just, it was too tight. It would not contour and fit with the door. And then I made a piece which came from my CIP1 parts. These are made from AutoCraft. And uh, I'll lay this out for you so you can see exactly what I had done here. Because the AutoCraft part matched the door beautifully. Let me show you what we got. Yeah, it's a little hard to get this all lined up, but there it is. You can see what I did. I cut out the piece from the AutoCraft CIP1 part, and then I grafted into this. So that made my curve, made it exactly the way it's supposed to be. Now the sucker fits on the door like it should. It looks like it's bulging out here a little bit. That's just an illusion. It's actually flat. It's just because that metal's ground down a little bit. doesn't have any paint on it. <laughs> Gonna have to hit it with some cat piss before we're done today. But anyway, look in here. Look at how that contour doesn't line up either. This is all higher than this. I mean, that's really easy to fix. You know, I'll just nick a little piece out of it and fold the metal over, and then I'll make a little patch to fill in the uh, gap. But look how terrible that is. That's, that's just, yeah, it's about as bad as it gets. <laughs> this is the piece that I cut off the top. And if you get a good look at it, you can see it exactly matches what I, what I had remaining. So yeah, the contour on this thing was just totally, totally messed up. Totally messed up, and that's the way it came from the uh, manufacturer of that part. This part I actually did not get from CIP1 because unfortunately they don't inventory that one. So I was not able to, um, to use it from them. And uh, this patch panel is not actually a replacement part. It's just a patch panel. So it didn't have all of the inner structures and shapes, and you can see the damn mosquitoes flying around in here, to uh, make this work. But anyway, I'm going to continue patching this sucker up get it welded in. On the back side, by the way, there's no gap whatsoever. The contour of the back lines up perfectly. <laughs> but of course, the back doesn't matter because there's no door to come in contact with that. And my door is completely and entirely my reference point. So you can see along the gap here, and if you notice, the gap actually does get a little bigger as we go this way. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And what happened is the seat pedestal and that's this area that's on top of the dog leg is bent down a little bit because it had no structure supporting it in the front. 
So I'll put a floor jack under it and I'll lift it up before I weld it in in the front. So that way my door gap is nice and even the whole way along. But that's what's going on there and uh, it looks like it's going to work out pretty good. I got a little bit of patching and welding still that I need to do. Uh, yesterday, last night, I actually did get to stick my head underneath somebody else's split window bus. And I got to see how these panels all go together. And surprisingly, there's not a lot of seams underneath there. And a lot of places where there are seams, they don't butt together very well. The factory made a real sloppy mess. The pieces just don't line up right. And in my case here, because I've been bending and tweaking and pulling and prodding and the whole works on this, these parts are actually going to fit together a whole lot better. But let's go ahead and stay on it. Keep going. Things are coming along real nicely. And I think I just heard my phone, so there might be a work call. You might have to finish this video tomorrow. But anyways, uh, yeah, let's stay on it. Alrighty, before I went any further, you probably noticed this piece used to be black, it's now gray. The black piece is there on the ground. I wasn't happy with the fitment of that. I could have made that work, but because I had never worked on one of these before, I wanted to try the CIP1.com Deluxe Edition part. It costs a little bit more, but it seems like it's totally worth it. Because when I stuck it on here and it just started clipping the pieces together, everything fit. When I put the little um, end pieces on the end of this thing, I had to force them into place, and if I let go, it's like it didn't have proper fitment. It would just spoon and shoot them right out, like a ping pong ball out of it. I am much happier with the fitment of this, and I figured it was important that I got to doing this before I did any more welding on the end pieces here, just to make sure that everything still fits together properly. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bolt in some bumper brackets to hold the whole front end together here. So that way I know exactly where this piece, piece is supposed to be located. I can tell you right away that the holes inside of the, oh whatever the hell this piece is called here, uh, are a little bit wider than the actual bumper mounts. So I might have to just cut a little slot in it perhaps, or maybe even go underneath and just put a porta power between the frame and just spread it out just a little bit, I mean not much, maybe a quarter of an inch just to make sure those holes line up appropriately to make sure that they are correct. And what I'll do, of course, is I'll put the face piece over that and make sure those holes line up with it too before I start stretching, pulling, prodding, banging, twisting, welding, cutting on anything. You guys get the point. Stuff is coming along under here. This fitment looks pretty good. Yes, I did get a service call. I am gonna have to knock it off here in a little bit, but I'm trying to, to soak up the rest of the daylight. It's gonna be, uh, I guess, daylight for about another 30 minutes. So I figured this would be a good point to start squeezing things together. Now you can see up in here, there's some uh, seams that need to be uh, filled. And actually this little A-pillar piece needs to be just pushed up and butted against that. And then the entire front face here will go up with that to match. Pretty interesting how all this stuff goes together. It's not the way I would have ever engineered it. Knowing what I know of sheet metal, I would have actually done this quite differently. Volkswagen put a lot of different little pieces into this and they probably could have even made it a little cheaper if they did it differently. But uh, <laughs> it seems to work. It seems to work and it's going to go together. CIP1.com, you can pick up these parts. Every part that you see up here on the front end has come from them, except for um, the pieces on the ends here. But those, those were just something I had to get from somewhere else. Unfortunately, I just don't stock those. But yeah, get all your bus parts, Gia parts, Beetle parts, whatever you need. Hit up CIP1. Fantastic people, great parts. And uh, the best thing about their website is that they may have three different varieties of the same part and they'll be honest with you, you know, good, better, best. This in this case was the good one. This one is the best one. So moving up was actually the right thing to do. And uh, I like the fitment of that much better. All right, well, let's keep on moving what we got here and uh, see if we can get this wrapped up today and cleaned up as uh, this is um, it's coming together and it's starting to look pretty good. 
Well, I was going to get out the drill and start punching some holes and get some welds put in, but it seems that uh, by the time I get set up for that, we're going to lose sunlight. So we're just going to wrap it up for the day. I do have that service call to go deal with, so yeah, today's just not going to be a good day to work on this, or at least continue to work on this. Anyways, as always, big shout outs and a big thank you goes to CIP1.com for sponsoring Gregory here. If you haven't checked out their website and purchased some Volkswagen parts, you should. They don't just have bus parts, they have stuff for Beatles things, pretty much anything air-cooled, and they've even got some water-cooled stuff on there, so really, you should guys have a look at the least and uh, see what you can find. Now, as always, right here, I ask you to licky, likey, comment, subscribe, pluck that dingle belly, and visit duckshit.net. That's my website. On my website, you can find stuff like my Duckman Cycles merch. You can also find links to my Patreon, to all of my different social media. And if you'd like to email me, duckmancycles at duckshit.net. Thanks a lot, you guys, for watching. Really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully, we'll be back tomorrow with some more stuff done on this. <laughs> we'll see what happens. But I'm in a very good position right now, really good position. This front end is finally going to be held on there, and then we can start cutting apart the top end. But yeah, now I'm not too excited about tearing into that because that's, well, you know what? The bottom was pretty weak too, but yeah, well, let's see what happens. <laughs> Thanks for watching, you guys. Appreciate it. See you next time.